Hello and welcome to this video from Client Engager. In today's video, we're going to be looking at users and departments and how we can set up our team in Client Engager to have the access that we want them to have and to be able to do what we want them to be able to do within Client Engager. So let's roll those credits and look at how we use users in Client Engager. Okay, so here we are in our demo account again. I'm gonna to go to settings. And first of all, before I start adding any of my system users, I'm gonna have departments edited. If you're a one man band or one or two person band, you might not need departments and that's absolutely fine. You can delete the departments. But if you're a bigger firm, so like myself, we're serving about 950 clients. We've got firms that are using it for free 4,000 clients on Client Engager. So having departments really helps with the reporting of the deadlines, understanding how much workload is in each department for capacity planning and stuff like that. So at the moment, we've got an accounts department, an admin department, a taxation department, and a payroll department. I'm gonna add for today's example, a CIS department and then as soon as I put that in it will automatically come up with a short name you can put a description in there and then it says here to assign users to the department we'll go to the system users so that's fine so we'll just save that so we've got our departments here and you can have as many departments as you want you can call them whatever you want but for now that's department set the next step is system users. So this one's a bit more complicated. We've got two types of user. We've got an admin that has access to everything and we've got a user whose access can be tailored on a case-by-case -case scenario. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new user. I'm going to call them a test user. I'm going to set their password. I'm going to call it their email again is that test test so we can then set a color that this user's seen as we can then set what department this person's part of so they're going to be part of the accounts department and we can choose whether they're an admin or a user now what you're going to notice is as an admin they're going to have permissions all you cannot select any permissions for an admin because that everyone every admin gets all permissions so if you want to tailor anyone, even this slightly, you need to class them as a user. And then we're going to change the permissions part. So we can deny all to save us having to click everything off. We can allow all so everything's turned on. We can also copy permissions from certain individuals. So if I went to say I want to confirm that, I've now copied across the permissions for just that user. So if you've got someone in payroll, who actually, we've got a new person joining payroll, they need the same permissions as John in payroll. All I need to do is go in, find John on the list, or let's go with Peter, because we've got a Peter name. And I can copy that, and that will only tick then what Peter can also see. That means everyone in the team's got the same access. Maybe you want to turn everything off and start from scratch. Okay, so what does all of this mean? That's the important part. So invoice. This is where your users can see credit control basically for your clients and what they owe your firm. So not everyone uses this feature because they haven't got QuickBooks powered. Our Xero integration is in progress, so that's on its way. If you don't want your users to see the debtors dashboard, then don't tick this. If you don't want them to have access to the debtors report, then don't turn this on. If you don't want them to be able to raise an invoice, then don't turn this on. So this bit's really important to get this right so that your users don't have access to any of the financial information you don't want them to have access to. We give users the ability to edit checklists. So you can, a user can add and edit a generic checklist. They can add or edit a tailored checklist or change any of the other checklist settings. So if you don't want your users to be able to do, adjust anything on the checklists, then you can turn this off. Maybe you don't want a user to be able to add any generic or edit any generic checklist, but you do want them to be able to add a checklist and tailor it to a client, so you just turn that one on. 
In our services, there's audit logs for all of our customers, all of our users, and all of our clients. You may want your user to have access to view the audit trail for these services, so you can choose that. In tasks, you can then decide whether you want them to be a user to be able to create tasks. I would argue that everyone in the firm should be able to create a task and assign it to someone because that would then allow them just to create a task and client engager and not have to hassle you when you're busy. We want them to be able to assign that to other staff members. We want them to be able to edit tasks created by themselves, which means they can then edit their due dates and stuff. So this whole section is all about creating those one-off tasks that we might need them to do. In a recent video, I spoke about client management and how they are prospects, clients, or archived, and you have the ability to delete. If you have not ticked delete client here, then your team member, your user will not have access to delete them. That button won't even show up for them. So if you to turn that on. When we're in our client view, one of the options is to see the annual fees that we can we are generating from a client. If you don't want them to see that, then you need to turn this off here. Another feature in now clients records is memos. Do you want your team members to be able to create a memo, view memos that they create themselves, edit memos that they've created, delete the memos that they've created, view the audit trails, etc. So there's lots of options here that you need to work out what you do and don't want your team members to be able to do with memos. Same principle with files. Do you want them to be able to create folders, upload files, etc.? And then we've got our signing requests. Do you want your user to be able to send signing requests, delete signing requests, etc.? So there we have it. That's how we can create a user, create a department, assign a user to a department, and check all of those user permissions to make sure that your users can only see and do in Client Engager what you want them to do. If there are any fields where you go, oh, actually, I'd love to be able to say whether a user can or can't access this, let us know, and we'll see if it's feasible to build that out into our permissions. We're doing a bit of a project on permissions in the coming weeks as we integrate our email integrations. Um, so there'll be a lot of work going on there to so keep an eye out for new permissions that are going to come along. But anything that's new, I'll, of course, let you know via an update video. Thank you for joining me today, and I'll look forward to speaking to you again soon.